you know, we haven't been able to do a lot of stuff this year where we got to invite people into the building. In terms of the athletic program, this is the first thing that we've got to do. Um, so welcome. And as you can see, uh, we have quite a few, quite a few got players that have decided that they want to go on and play um, sports after high school here. Would you guys, I, I, I want you to, um, you know, first I wanted to say some thank yous. I want to, you know, thank them for the work that they put in over the last four years. And this has been a really strange four years, especially the last year and a half, you know, of many of these guys' as athletic, high school athletic careers. Um, I'd like to take, you know, this opportunity, because we don't hand the mic to the kids, to on their behalf thank you, parents. Guys, everybody in here knows what kind of sacrifice and commitment it takes from you for them to excel at sports. And I'd also like to thank the coaches. They work um, ridiculously hard in order to get their teams to the point where they want them, but also to, they work with the individual at a, at a high level in order to ensure success for them. And so you guys just really quick a round of applause for all of you. before I hand this off to the coaches and let them talk a little bit. You guys, I'm sure that you know that we're particularly proud of the number of kids that decide to go on and play. It, um, our pride isn't necessarily in the fact that Arapaho High School has this number of kids, 22 today, that have excelled at such a level that they can go on and play. What makes me really, really proud of our programs is that their experience here has been such that they want to continue on and play that they want to go on and play some more, that they want to experience this some more once they're done with high school. And that is one thing, that is the thing that makes me the proudest of all this. Um, and so without any, any more, this is what we kind of do. We recognize that timelines from colleges, they don't really set themselves up for any kind of ceremony where we actually sign letters of intent. And so we just create a form where we get all of their signatures and we keep those for posterity in a notebook. Um, and, we'll, and we'll start at the end, and, we'll, and I'll take this down to Sloan, and she'll sign this thing uh, on this clipboard, and then pass it down um, as we go, as the coaches talk. And, we'll get, and you guys feel free to move around and get a picture when you want to, when that's happening. Um, but anyway, that's the process that we use. And so I'm going to start by introducing our head girls golf coach, Eric Rudin. Thank you guys. Yeah, we're awesome here with the training center at 9 o'clock this morning, so we're out of here as soon as uh, uh, we get done. So, Sloan's an unbelievable story. Uh, she's going to be a three-time state qualifier, an all-centennial league candidate. Uh, she has a great chance this year to win state. We might have the best guy for the state sitting right here. Uh, she's going to go to the UNC to play. And this is all picking up a golf club freshman year. She never played golf before she came to a rap ball. So to do all that in three years in a game like golf is unbelievable, right? So thank you, Sloan, and we're going to go win the day. Carol, right? Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our head football coach, Rod Shum. That is the young man I get to introduce. <clears throat> he couldn't be here this morning, so it'll be a quick introduction. Zeke is absolutely one of the coolest kids um, that is on this campus. Came here last March, had some uh, things that, uh, and he got a fresh start here at Arapahoe. And unfortunately, it was a difficult time to start school here in March, uh, right as COVID started and, and we stopped. He quickly assimilated into our team. Uh, if you we were able to see our team play at all this year. Uh, average almost 200 yards a game rushing. Uh, was really dominant for us. Is a tough kid, but more than that. Came, looked with his cousin, and uh, impacted the culture. He's going to do unbelievable things at CSU Pueblo. We're super proud of him. Zeke Pierce. And introducing our boy, Coach Taylor Hamilton. this year that are signing to go play at the collegiate level. So I will start with Amelia. 
Amelia, Arapa Volleyball is super proud of you and you've done an amazing job in your past four years. I got to experience two of them and they were super fun. East Carolina University is going to be your new home and we're really excited for you to excel there as a middle as well as hopefully become a teacher. So elementary education will be very lucky to get you when you come back. We are super excited for what you're going to do there, and I know that their conference is going to have a force to be reckoned with, so go, go Pirates, sorry. Um, and then Morgan, we are super excited that you chose to play at the next level. Vosser is in New York, so you are going to rock it there. Morgan has excelled here at Arapahoe in athletics as well as academics, being an eight-semester honor roll student, so we know that your major in econ and minor in math is going to do you well. Congrats. So I am here today for Ms. Darby, who has signed up to play lacrosse at American University. And I've had the pleasure of not only coaching Darby this season here at Rapala, but also these past few years at the club level. So it has been so fun to watch her grow into the athlete, leader, and woman that she's become today. And it's funny because at the club level these past three, four years, I thought of Darby's such a quiet kid. And then I stepped out of the field of the rap home here for the first time about three, four weeks ago. And she is not quiet. She is a strong, hard, uh, vocal leader. And that's exactly what the team needs. So we are so proud of Darby. We know she's going to do great things at American. And we wish her absolutely nothing but the best. So good luck, Darby. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Hi, I'm Joey Kinnell, head girls basketball coach here. I'm here to talk about Katie Edwards and uh, what a blessing it is to be able to do that today. Um, Katie, like everybody else sitting up here, uh, put in the work. And that's the cool thing about seeing so many of you up here knowing that you understand that you have to put in the work or it just doesn't even happen. Uh, Katie started when she was probably in fourth grade coming to our youth camp every summer. Uh, developed a relationship with all the coaches and players there. Uh, missed most of her junior year with an injury. I came back to work, getting ready for her senior year, doing a lot of individual work on her own. Uh, she was a catalyst to us getting to the grade eight. Um, she's a renaissance a student athlete. She participated in three sports uh, every year. Earned, I don't know how many letters, the varsity letters are doing that. Uh, she's a great player and did a great job for us. She will be going to Caltech, uh, and they're going to pick up not only a great basketball player, an incredible student, and a tremendous leader. So uh, good luck to you, Katie. Hello, I'm uh, filling in for our head coach, um, Troy Bachner, who couldn't be here. He's out of town on business, but there are just a few things that our staff would like to say about Ben Yagi. Um, the entire Rapport Boys basketball program would like to congratulate Ben on his commitment to play college basketball at the prestigious United States Coast Guard Academy. Ben is a talented basketball player who will most certainly continue his development as a high achieving collegiate athlete. Playing basketball beyond high school is a significant accomplishment, but to possess the academic qualifications, ethical and citizenship merits, and dedicated desire to serve one's country makes Ben's opportunity to play basketball at the United States Coast Guard Academy extraordinary. Best wishes, Ben, and the entire Warrior community is proud of you and all of you have done on and off the court. We can't wait to support you moving forward. swim by the tennis courts one day and, and, and you know you can meet her and she can meet you know some of the team whatever and so I went for about five to ten minutes and, and dad at the end was like hey you know do you think she'll she'll fit in and as I was uh, about to pass out and huffing and puffing from uh, you know uh, making me feel old and slow I you know I told her that she'd fit right in told her fit right in so um, she instantly became one of the you know best players in the 
She's got a record of, of 33 and 7, a two time regional champion, and then her sophomore year, she was a state semifinalist. Um, like many of, of the players up here, you know, I, you know, bummed that she didn't get experience uh, high school tennis uh, last year. Uh, but we're looking forward to her finishing her uh, her career. And, uh, you know, as far as good of a tennis player, Julia, really, she's an even better person. And um, she, she works incredibly hard. Um, and I, you know, can't say enough uh, kind things for Julia. So congratulations to Julia Mandel. strong, their attitude is positive, they're responsible as a student, and they're tenacious on the baseball field. These guys do that. These guys are my, really my first senior class with last year, the way that it went, um, and I'm so proud of all of you for carrying that after them and playing with heart each and every day. So our first one, Chris Albee, down there, Chris. Chris is going to Green River College, and I couldn't be more excited for him to not only pursue baseball, but he's going to pursue his passion in chemical engineering. Um, and he worked extremely hard to find that college. He didn't go off to that college thinking baseball. He went up to that college for his academics, and he's going to play baseball. And that's what all these guys have looked at, and they've committed to, which is really, really cool. For me, Chris, um, he suffered one of the worst injuries you can have as a pitcher uh, with the Tommy John surgery, and he has somehow, some way, come back in a miraculous amount of time to be able to play this year. Uh, he is fighting me tooth and nail to get up on the bump. Uh, he and I had a good conversation because he wants to throw, and he's ready to throw, and we're very blessed for that. So, Chris, thank you for working so hard. <laughs> the next one. <laughs> Grant the clue. Grant, I have written down here the two strike approach. Because every time I see Grant get up there when he's got two strikes, he's the guy that just will not give up. And he will fight and fight and fight and fight. And the guys in the dugout, they just go crazy. Because that is the toughest out with two strikes. And if you had seen him jump up on the bump this Saturday with Sax Jam and mow down the guys that he did, we're going to be good. We're starting off slow, but I truly believe we're going to be good. So, congratulations, Western Community College. <laughs> Next one, Garrett Dykstra. Garrett is, what I have written down for Garrett is Bulldog. And for me, what that means, I'm scared to go to the mound and try to take him out of the game. Because he looks at me like, don't, don't you even think about it. And that's what you want with pitchers. That's what you want with players. That's what you want in life is guys and gals and people who don't want to quit. They don't want to come out. And that's what he's done. Um, I'm so happy for Garden City because Garden City is a wonderful opportunity, a great baseball school, and they're great, getting a great left-hander. Congratulations. <laughs> Trude Aiken is next. Truman's going to Orange Coast College. Did I say that right? I asked that because he had so many opportunities um, and it took him a long time to decide which one he was going to jump at. But after a successful visit there, he went there and he's very, very excited to go. One of the things that I'd like to tell you about, about Truman is he, uh, his grade point average is unbelievable. And I'll mention that as I get to the end. But Truman is that guy in the classroom who is responsible. He's that guy outside who's responsible. He does the things that he has to do to make sure he's fulfilling the obligations that his wonderful family is asking him. And I'm very, very proud of True Megan. <laughs> Next, Davis Nesky. Davis is our catcher. Um, and if you listen to Yogi, Yogi Berra, and he'd say uh, catching the, the, the equipment of the tools of ignorance, because you have to get behind the plate and get beat up game after game, day after day, season long, season long, and the bullpens 
and Davis doesn't shy away from that. There's times Davis comes out of the bullpen looking like Pigpen because he's worked so hard. And I'm just so proud of you, bud, for the opportunity you're going to get. Uh, you're going to be a fantastic player at Cuesta, Cuesta College um, is where you're headed. So congratulations, Davis. Next one is Drew Sawyers. Uh, for me, Drew and I, um, he's been a model of perseverance. He has come in as a freshman and he continued to work and continue to work and continue to work. And he was actually on the recruiting website as the number one track player field level in the state because he worked so hard at it. These guys worked extremely hard to find a place to play. I, I didn't, I just said, yes, you can play there. But they did the homework, and all the athletes that are out there now, it's up to you to find a place. You can go, but you have to do the legwork, and Drew did exactly that. He was heartbroken, and I was heartbroken this year, because he had to choose to step away his senior year from soccer because of the overlap of COVID. And that was hard on me, because I'm such a huge fan of soccer, and the soccer program, and the game. But Drew didn't miss an opportunity. When he decided to step away, he knew that it was his opportunity to shine. We moved him back into shortstop when we lost our guy this year, and he has fulfilled that role. He's going to play outfield in college, but he's a fantastic player and a great shortstop. Congrats, Drew. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, that's our shortstop right there, uh, Will Sevier. I have written down uh, for you, Will, love of the game, because if there's somebody out there that loves more than you, I don't know. Come on, you're supposed to punch me. <laughs> okay, good job. So the reason I get emotional after all these guys is Will lost the senior season because of injury. Punch me. Okay, good. <laughs> and that's hard. Um, it's still not working. But he's good at everything. Holy smokes, he's good at everything. He comes to practice, he goes to freshman games, he coaches, he does whatever he can to be involved. And the art of church, <laughs> down in Scottsdale Community College in Arizona, a fantastic player. Yeah. Sorry about that. I want to tell you one thing about these seven guys. When I add all the great point averages together, 3.97. And that's what it means to be a student athlete here at Rapid. 3.97. I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> we have a swimmer and diver next, so let me introduce our head and swim and dive coach, Mike Richmond. Okay, so. Well, it's hard to talk about great athletes, but it's also a pleasure. Uh, first one we have is Megan Bergstrom, and she's going to go swim at BYU. She's a distance swimmer, so we're limited in high school to 500 distance. So, well, excellent, most excellent event is the 1650. So 500 is too short. It's really not a distance event. But despite that, Megan placed second in the state. She's third all time. At Arapaho, we've got some great distance swimmers. And what stands out about Megan is her just continued excellence in practice every day, every single day. No playing, lying, no faces, just hard work back and forth in a pool. Unbelievable amounts of work. And she's one of the best ever at it. So I can't say enough about Megan and what she's provided for me and, and our team and, and her athlete friends. Um, just a wonderful person, and uh, we'll miss you, Megan. Thank you. Uh, Will Griffin uh, is her twin, not, not in reality, but they're training twins. Uh, now, Megan was a distance specialist, but also a sprint. Mary actually was a distance swimmer only until she got a little stronger and continued to train. Now she's one of our best sprinters as well. It was on relays at state in the 50 free and 100 free on 200 and 400 free cell relays. She's an IMer. She was also a league champion, centennial league champion in 200 individual medley, which demonstrates her versatility in all four strokes. 
She went to um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the Far Island, where she's currently ranked second in her class. Um, first, okay. Wow, that's a development. Why am I not surprised? Uh, so, uh, what, you know, the two of these young ladies, they, I didn't know I was going to grow up to be a synchronized swimming coach, and what I mean by that is they trained in a synchronized fa fashion. They flipped at the same time if they're next to each other, pushed off at the same time, got out of the water, got in the water together. It was unbelievable, day after day after day. Even at state this year, when they were both swimming the 5 and 3 they were on opposite sides of the pool, and they flipped it at the same time. So, how do you replace that? You know, hopefully you just uh, celebrate their career as they go forward. So, congratulations to them on that standing career. Next person, actually he's not here, his name is Fletcher Hayes, and he is going to go to Auburn. And why is he not here? He wanted to practice this morning, so he's at practice, which demonstrates Fletcher's um, discipline, dedication, and incredible drive to reach to the highest levels. Um, can't say enough about this guy, he's a school record holder in the and uh, we'll go to swim division one. And he's a great leader in every way. So Fletcher Hayes. <laughs> and our last swimmer before we hand it over to Coach Jeff Smith, who is our guiding coach, to talk about Kimmel Tatum is Lindsay Weir. Lindsay was swimming at the University of Minnesota. And when she came in as a freshman, all she could do was a 53. That's it. So 100 was too long for too much distance. Which is actually uh, at the spring, as we know. And uh, by, by the time she has left Arapaho, she's now an outstanding 200 freestyle, which I think will be, will find her to be uh, one of the best events in college. She has a high ceiling, tremendous potential, tremendous athlete, and it's been fun to watch her learn to run swimming and put a lot into it. All three of these young ladies were terrific workers, can't replace them, and we'll be following you in the future. Um, Lindsay, who was also, by the way, a state champion, I forgot to mention that. School record holder in 50, two, two different years for junior senior. Also, the league record in holder in 53, and the pool record holder in St. Peter, as well as the Rambo, so a long list of achievements. So, fantastic group, thank you, and I'll turn it over to Jeff Smith. She is the embodiment of a student athlete. I cannot say enough, but I'll certainly try. She's a four time state qualifier, three time state finalist. But that's only a little bit about Kindle. When I think about her, I think of a number of words faith, family, growth, perseverance, dedication. She's an incredible young lady, and I can't be more proud of her. The mere fact that she's going to Carnegie Mellon. I decided to look up universities and see what this was all about. Not to take anything away from y'all, but uh, well, Carnegie is ranked ninth in the world. <laughs> so that just shows what a, a great, incredible young lady she is. Off the field, she was student body president, uh, vice president her senior year. She's ranked third in her class. She's the one who understands what life is all about. She is so grounded. And she will come up to me and we'll have discussions. She'll ask a lot of questions because that's, I always ask if anybody has a question, they just gonna, yeah, but what about this, Jeff? She's been an incredible leader. Last two years, she was my captain of my dive team. And she was the top recruit for Carnegie Mellon in diving. She's gonna go out and study biomedical engineering and mechanical engineering. So, Kendall, Arapaho and myself is a better place, and I've been a better person having had you in my life. Please stay in touch. Congratulations to all you athletes. Good luck in your, uh, your pursuits going forward.
I too while um, I was pretty last. Um, but uh, one thing I can say is I'm, I'm very grateful that Coach Allen is here. Uh, so therefore, I would not be the only one crying. Um, no, I, uh, I first want to talk about um, uh, Brady Ridges. Uh, a lot of people know, um, and uh, the Rapid Soccer is uh, um, probably the most successful uh, soccer program in the state of Colorado, and it's, it's very difficult for um, young people to come in as freshmen and jump into our program and, and make an immediate impact. Um, and what we do, we as a coaching staff, um, pay much attention to freshmen as they come in, uh, just because it's so difficult uh, in our competitive sport. Uh, but when you come in as, as a freshman, um, we noticed it right away, not only because of her size and stature, but uh, her incredible confidence. Uh, and I think that probably is the the word that best describes her um, as, a, as a player, as, as an athlete, as, as a, a student, is confident. Uh, to be able to come into this program as a freshman, that confident. Um, and there's a difference between confidence and cockiness. Uh, and uh, she just came and said, hey, I play this game, I play it very well. You need me to have a, uh, have a field. And um, being a starter at Rockwell Soccer um, as, since her freshman year, um, it was quite a feat in itself, um, but also being um, a integral part of a, a state uh, championship team um, and uh, a team that, uh, uh, you know, we were the state championship team. Did I just say we were a state championship team? Um, we were supposed to be. Um, but uh, to have that kind of influence um, at, such, at such a young age and then um, coming in this year, knowing this year is going to be weird. Uh, she took uh, leadership role and ran with it. Um, while I was dealing with the boys' season, uh, Reagan just said, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of everything that we need to take care of for, for the girls' season. Um, and she did that. And um, I'm incredibly proud of her. She's good. She's good. I thought I to play. Um, she had multiple offers. Uh, I think that's a great choice for her. Um, we're excited to watch her. And her creation is one of the um, as a lot of the coaches here have said, uh, we will miss those athletes that um, you know, have, has created um, their own imprint on, on our program. Uh, as Megan has certainly been a great leader, um, an incredible athlete, a great student. Um, I would consider her a, a close friend. Um, I know that's unclear, but when you've worked with the, the kid for this long, um, I think that's what it is. Um, and uh, Iraq was a better place you know, because she's been here and I'm a better person as well. So, congratulations, Brad. Um, and our, our last player uh, that uh, we can talk about today is Paige Fuller. Um, Paige, uh, um, uh, this is actually the first official year that I've officially met Paige. Um, she joined us this year as a senior, um, and I, I couldn't be happier. Um, people talked about the age and was like, oh. Sorry, it's a steel point in my head. Um, but Paige, uh, you know, we, we heard of her, and uh, her ability to play the game, um, and, and you know, she's very passionate about the sport, and uh, being incredibly lucky. Uh, and fortunate to have Paige um, with our squad this year. Uh, and one of the things about Paige that I noticed immediately, um, it's got to be a little weird, um, one more thing to come in as a senior um, and, and join this program, get a short of the season, where do I fit, what do I do? Uh, and Paige just came in and played. Uh, she's got an infectious um, sense of humor. Um, a tad bit snarky and sarcastic like now, so um, I love the challenge. You know, uh, a great leader. You know, Colby is going to be um, a better school, a better program that she's going to be in. I uh, look forward to her success. And the only regret I have is that we didn't have her for four years as well. Uh, but uh, we're blessed to have her now. So congratulations, Paige. Thank you, man. You guys, one more round of applause.
applause for all of these student-athletes that we have up in the Tremendous, tremendous thing. Um, what we'd like to do now, you guys, is we're going to get some pictures. All right, and, there's been, and we want you guys to have some opportunities if you haven't already to get pictures at these tables and get pictures with groups. Um, but we would like to start by having every single body come up in front of this warrior head mascot right here. All of our athletes, we can get one group picture before we move on. Guys, this is a PLC day. Feel free to stay for a few minutes, you know, talk, do your thing. Um, and thanks again for coming, and congratulations to all.